This is the Morning Swim Show for Friday, April 20th, 2012. I'm your host, Peter Bush, in the Phoenix Monitor today. We'll talk to Tyler Clary. He's a favorite to make the U.S. Olympic team in several events. And Tyler joins us right now in the Phoenix Monitor from Newport Beach, California. Tyler, welcome back to the show. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you, Peter? Good. And you're literally at the beach today, huh? Yeah, no kidding. I'm sitting on, well, not on the sand, but on a towel on the sand as we speak. What a rough life you're living out there. I know. It's terrible, isn't it? You want to switch? <laughs> now I know why you didn't go back to Ann Arbor. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, before the show, we were listening to your music. That's good stuff. Yeah, you like it? Yeah, how long have you been doing that? Uh, I've been I've been involved in DJing since my sophomore year in college, and I've just been kind of toying around with it for a long time, and only until recently did I get into actually producing my own music and that's that's actually the first song I've ever completed so I've, I've gotten a lot of good feedback on it and I'm pretty excited for that being my first song. The uh, best way to describe it is it's like club music right? Yeah well that song that song's more of like a, I, I would say you'd listen to that more of in a like kind of a chill lounge or at a beach party or something like that it's definitely not something you'd hear at like you know, some European club or anything like that. But that's something I'm going to delve into later. I was thinking it would be perfect for marching out to the 400 IM in Omaha. What do you think? Uh, I, th I know somebody at USA Swimming. We might be able to make that happen. Yeah, I mean, there's probably a way to make that happen, but I don't know if that would be my first pick a song to listen to before the 400 IM. <laughs> <laughs> well, how is training going? Training's going really well. I, I actually, uh, last week, well, since Austin, I, I mean, obviously my shoulder was hurt in December and I hadn't been able to train for a while or at least consistently before the Austin Grand Prix and that was really frustrating. But then after the Austin Grand Prix, my shoulder got a lot better and I was able to put in a solid six or seven weeks of solid hard training and I was back training at, you know, the, the level that I was at. and with the intensity that I had liked, if not more intensity than I've had in the past, if not ever. So that was really nice to do. And then I went and had a, had a really good meet in Indy. My, my goal for the meet was to go in and swim the 400 IM in either 414 or faster. And I went a 413.0. So I was very happy with that. I, I mean, best time in the 400 free. So the cool thing about the 400s is that the they are probably the best gauge at how conditioned you are and the 200s though are more of a more of a gauge on how how well your rest is coming because you really need to have that that easy speed in a 200 and obviously in my 200s I didn't have that so <laughs> um, as far as training goes it's going really well and I'm excited to see how it all comes together once I start getting some rest so heading into this all important Olympic trials you feel confident that you've got the training you need under your belt Oh, absolutely. I mean, I know just from the years that I've had with John, I mean, I know that we're some of the hardest, hardest training athletes there are within the swimming world. And just, just to train for the 400 IM, you have to train harder than, than a lot of, a lot of other events. So, you know, I'm not really worried about my conditioning at all coming into the trials. It's all going to come down to, you know, how well I put it together when it, when it counts and that's that's actually been the cool thing that I've noticed in the last couple of weeks is that I mean I'm, I'm at the point where you know I'm not really gonna get much faster I'm not really going to get in much better shape it's it's things are gonna happen the way they're gonna happen and I'm really just along for the ride and the key now is to get my mind out of the way for my body to do what I've been training it to do for years and years now you say getting your mind out of the way is that something you're concerned about Oh, no, not at all. That's that's something I'm very good at. I, I mean, a, a lot of my best races, I, I can only, like, they, they almost seem like, like a dream to me when I try and recall them. I don't, I don't remember the pain. I don't remember, I don't remember any of the nervousness beforehand. And all I remember is just, like, things seem to happen in slow motion. I seem to be super clear and present and aware of everything that's around me. Did it take you a certain point in your career and experience to to have that you know feeling and that mental confidence or has that always been the case for you it has definitely hasn't always been the case for me that 
that mental state that I that I've been able to get myself into when I need to is was really only something that I had harnessed in 2009. The first time I'd ever experienced it was at the Pan American Games. I believe it was in 2007 when I I did really well in the 200 backstroke, and I didn't really know what had happened then, and I I lost sight of that for a couple of years, but then it kind of all fell back into place in 2009 in the the collegiate season and then it it carried over into the into the long course season at world championships in rome and then it then pan packs in irvine and then it, I, I i had a decent meet and it happened a couple of times in shanghai so i'm really excited to you know keep my head on straight and get that going again and really kind of open up a can are we unfair when we suggest that ryan lochte is the guarantee to win the 400 IM and that it's kind of a race for second? Absolutely. You think you can beat him? I think anyone can beat him. I think he's, you know, he's a very fast swimmer. He's an incredibly talented athlete, but at the same time he is human and it doesn't matter what anybody's done in the past. I, I could have, I could have been, you know, the world record holder three weeks ago and, you know, some, some 14 year old kid could come up and beat me at trials it really doesn't matter all that matters is who puts it together on that day when it counts and I think I've definitely got the skill set and the mindset to go out there and challenge him if not beat him what are you going to swim at trials the definite possibilities that I'm well the definite events that I'm going to swim are the 400 IM the 200 butterfly and the 200 backstroke and we're also looking at the 200 freestyle and possibly the 400 freestyle, depending on how the 400 IM goes. But being that the 400 IM falls on the same day as the 4 free, it's a very slim chance that I'll swim the 4 free unless something like crazy happens, like I blow out my groin or something weird. Well, let's not have that happen, Tyler. Yeah, I'd rather not. <laughs> <laughs> 200 free, huh? Thinking about making a run at that relay? Yeah, why not? I mean, it, it's, it's the way it I look It seems like at a pretty good chance for a gold medal this summer. Yeah, it, it always is. That's the cool thing about that relay is it's always a pretty good chance at getting a gold medal. And the the way I look at it is you get into finals, you've got a 75% chance at making it. So why not take those chances? What are you going to do after the summer? Uh, the plans right now are to move back to Michigan and complete my degree in computer science. Uh, obviously continue training there. And I'm actually looking at setting a couple things up to go to a couple of, uh, of auto racing schools and kind of dabble in that and see what happens. I, I, it's, a, it's a dream of mine to actually be, as corny as it sounds, a race car driver after swimming's over. And I've had the good fortune to, to meet uh, a lot of really cool people who've kind of pointed me in the right direction and, and have shown me some really interesting opportunities that are out there for people like me who've who've never gotten into racing when they were young and there are specific events for people in that situation so I'm, I'm really excited to see what happens with that. NASCAR Clary? I'm thinking more open wheel or IndyCar. Car. Turn, left turns left turns at 220 miles an hour is pretty cool but you know open wheel right next to people going left and right down all sorts of complex and, and tricky courses sounds a lot more fun to me. <laughs> are, are you practicing in the LA rush hour? Uh, I try not to considering that's that's hugely illegal and I'm not too I'm, I'm more worried about the other drivers than uh, than my, my own skills on the freeway. <laughs> well you are a man of many interests. Yeah, that's what they say. All right well uh, Show us real quick, a lot of people have never been to Newport Beach. Give us a quick look around. To show us what we're missing. Well, it's actually kind of funny. So when I walked out here, it was, it was absolutely gorgeous. And I was looking out towards the horizon, and there was some marine layer out there. And I was like, oh, it's, it's just still burning off. But it turns out it was making a late charge back in towards the coast. So you'll have to excuse the poor, um, the poor air quality right now. But, like I said, we are literally sitting on the beach. You were not kidding. No, I wasn't. And you're with your girlfriend? Yes, sir. This is... Do you want to my... introduce her to viewers? This is Caroline Kosciuszko. Hi. Hi, Caroline. <laughs> Who are you? She looks like an alien right now with her glasses on. <laughs> <laughs> well, nice to meet you. Tyler, thanks a lot for coming on the show. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch you this summer. Good luck, buddy. Thanks a lot.
All right, that's Tyler Clary joining us literally from the beach at Newport Beach, California. And that's it for today's show. I'm Peter Bush reminding you to keep your head down at the finish.